What's up, .NET developers? Are you just getting started with AWS and you're just trying to figure out what to do? Well, I think the first thing we should do is set up some tools. So in this video, we're going to go through all the tools that you can use to get .NET onto AWS. Hey folks, in my last video, we went through cloud computing and AWS in general and how it can be a great option for building .NET apps on. Uh, I thought the next video would be really great to talk about tools. You know, as .NET developers, we love our tools, whether they're uh, command line based like CLIs or PowerShell, um, if they're in an IDE of our choice, uh, or even in the browser. I, I wanted to kind of show some of the options that we have um, for .NET uh, building .NET apps on AWS. So before we get started, I want to show a, a little bit of some of the prerequisites that are needed to kind of get off the ground running with uh, building .NET apps on AWS. So the first thing that you're going to need to follow along is an IDE of your choice. So that can be Visual Studio. So in the demo that I'm going to be showing, it's going to be Visual Studio uh, 2022 Community. Uh, you can also use Visual Studio Code if you like, or JetBrains Writer. So every major IDE for .NET is going to be a part of this. You also should have familiarity with the command line. So Bash, PowerShell, CMD. Uh, I'm going to show some really uh, cool things that we can really do in the command line to you know, one-up our AWS experience. Finally, we're talking about .NET. So we additionally should have .NET installed. So that the current time of this recording, .NET 6. So you can go to .NET.Microsoft.com slash download to get the latest version of .NET. And before we get started, we're going to have to have an AWS account as well. Uh, AWS has a free tier with all sorts of options to uh, play around and, and get a good understanding of what some of the capabilities that you can do on AWS. Uh, so you can go to aws.amazon.com to do that. And with that, let's get started. I want to hop over to my demo environment where all I have is um, I have Windows Terminal installed. I have Visual Studio 2022 Community, like I mentioned. I have VS Code and I have Writer. So the first thing that you're looking at here, this is the AWS console. So this is where you can do a lot of management um, sort of tasks for AWS services. Uh, and the one thing that we're going to do in this um, uh, site on, on the, this platform is we're going to set up access for all of these IDEs and command line utilities to be able to interface with AWS. So in order to do that, so I'm inside the AWS console here, I'm going to go up in the top right and I'm going to go down to security credentials. And how um, AWS works is we're, we build applications, we build um, experiences thinking about security first. So we want to make sure that even at the IDE level, we're using um, the right um, setup for that. So in order to um, get access to the AWS console for um, all these different IDEs and command lines, like I mentioned, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to go over to access management and we're going to go to users. And then I'm just, so right here, I don't have any users right now. I'm just going to create one. Let's just call it tools. Actually, I'm going to click add users. Sorry about that. I'm going to click tools. And then I'm going to specify right here, access key, programmatic access. So it's going to give us an access key and a secret. So we'll go to permissions attach an existing policy directly. So that's administrator account, click that. This is gonna give us all sorts of different access and abilities to do things inside of the IDE um, around AWS services. Click tags, we don't need any tags for right now, so let's just go review and then create a user. So what comes up next is our, basically our access key and our secret for our um, connectivity to AWS. So I'm gonna download a CSV here so as you can see here, we have a, a new credential CSV created, and I'm going to close this. Uh, now that we have the access credentials set up for uh, all of our tools, um, let's go ahead and get started by configuring, installing and configuring the AWS CLI. So I already have in my downloads folder, I have the AWS CLI already downloaded, the installer for it. So I'm going to click next, accept the terms, next, next, and then install. So while that's installing, I want to pop open those credential files that I downloaded. So open this up. So inside of here, we're going to have um, our access key as well as our secret, um, preferably not sharing this, but um, it's going to get deleted right after this video gets published. So um, once we're um, at a point where the CLI is completed, we can actually go into the terminal and configure the CLI. So I'm going to click finish here. 
open up this. So I'm going to scroll up here. Let's just go AWS configure. And then it's going to ask for the access key, which is right here. So I'll paste this in. And then next thing it's going to ask for is the, the secret ID. All right, so paste that in there. And then it's going to ask for default region name. Uh, let's just go default for West US 2 because I live uh, by, the C by Seattle. And then it's going to ask for a default Apple format. Let's just go with JSON. And then we're good. So then I can do something like AWS Dynamo DB list tables. And this will actually list in JSON format all of the, the table names that I have in AWS. So that's pretty cool. So what happens if I am not, uh, I don't want to write um, CLI commands. I don't want to use the CLI, uh, the bash style CLI. I'd rather use something like PowerShell. Um, so we have the AWS um, PowerShell tools that exist. Um, and to get started with those, let's we have to install some modules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to open up, I'm going to open up terminal in administrator mode. I'm going to close that out one. Let's zoom in here. And then there's just a handful of commands that we need to run. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install um, a module, which is the AWS Tools Installer. So install that. And this will take a second. Um, make sure that you have the correct execution policy set up. So we have that. And then I can install something. Let's just copy and paste. Let's just do, um, let's just install S the S3 bucket module. So I'll install that. All right, and then once we're here, we can actually start writing commands immediately because we're using the same credentials uh, syncing that was done with the CLI. So I can create like a new S S3 bucket with a bucket name of 11 bucket in the, that same region, US West 2. So um, this is going to give me the output here that I'm looking for. I can then, if I want to, I can get that same S3 bucket. And then I can, if I want to, I can remove it. And it's going to ask me if I'm sure if I want to produce that. Let's go that. So then if I do get again, it comes back with nothing. So whether you like built writing, um, whether you like scripting in bash style um, syntax, so using like the AWS CLI, you have an option. If you prefer PowerShell, we have the PowerShell option as well. So really cool stuff. Options are great. Using the command line is great, but what if I want to use an IDE? So like I mentioned, um, AWS has extensions for the three IDs that I spoke about earlier, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and JetBrains Writer. So let's start by going through the process in Visual Studio. So right now I'm in Visual Studio 2022, the Community Edition. I can go and uh, do a internet search for AWS Toolkit. I can go to aws.com to find that as well, AWS Amazon.com, or I can do it inside Visual Studio as well. So I can go to Extensions, Manage, and then I search online, I can search for AWS here, and I download the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. Download this, and then it's gonna um, say that it needs to restart, so I close that, close Visual Studio, then it's gonna come up with the V6 installer for the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio 2022, click Modify, and then once it's done installing, we can go in and open up Visual Studio again. So let's do that. So continue without code. And then sometimes the, um, the window doesn't load. So if we go to View, AWS Explorer, it's going to ask us to set up our profile, which we have here. We can also specify a new one if we like by providing an access key and a secret. We can import from that same CSV file, which we can do here. Let's just go downloads there, specifies that. And then once that's loaded, we have all of the experience that we have um, from the CLI as well. So let's just go to West US. And then we can, for instance, open up this DynamoDB table and look and we see that we have a movies uh, table in there. So that's for Visual Studio. And then you can do all sorts of really, really great things inside of Visual Studio. You can manage all these different resources. Um, but this is just a getting started on getting set up with the tools. So that's Visual Studio. So now let's go into VS Code. Let's close this, maximize, close that out. 
So in Visual Studio, you can go Visual Code. You can go to the extensions window and type in AWS, and it will come up with the AWS toolkit. So we can install that. Let's trust the workplace and install it. And then after that's installed, we can actually go through and start to configure. Let's uh, allow that access there. And it says now you're using the toolkit. So then we can do something like uh, AWS connect to AWS. It's going to, um, it can ask for those credentials that already exist. We can specify those. I want to show the default region. Let's go uh, US West 2. And then once that's loaded, we have an AWS uh, icon here in our pane that we can actually go in and manage things. So for instance, we can take a look at um, all of our lambdas that are running. We can look at our S3 buckets and so on and so forth. So really, really cool stuff there. So that's Visual Studio Code. So last but not least, let's take a look at the experience using JetBrains Writer. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to open up JetBrains Writer. I'm going to go to Configure, go to Plugins. And then I'm going to search for AWS. AWS Toolkit, Install. It's going to a third uh, party privacy warning. Click on Accept. And once this is installed, it's going to again read from that default credentials that we had earlier. Um, and we're going to have all the same experiences. Let's restart the IDE. Yep, restart. And once the ID comes back up, we can then go through that same management experience. All right. So let's just um, let's just do this. Let's create a new project here. Just so we have something uh, to create an empty solution. So once this is loaded, you can see that the AWS toolkit is loaded. We can take a look there. And then if we go to our AWS toolkit pane here, we had those same experiences. We can take a look at our Lambda functions, S3 buckets, and so on and so forth. So that is JetBrains Rider. So what did we learn today? So we learned that there are, depending on what you're doing, there are a ton of tool options. Um, that exist for uh, AWS, uh, especially with your .NET developer. Uh, one of the things that I love to call out is, you know, whether you love the CLI, whether you use IDE, whether you use different tools for the job, AWS provides um, functionality for those tools to really uh, set you up for success. Um, so that's all I had for today. Stay tuned for the next edition. We'll be talking about another AWS topic and how we can make .NET developers that much better. Thank you. Take care.